Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of the Budding Watch Enthusiast. So uh, I, I wanted to, uh, I'm doing a discussion based video today. I didn't want to do a discussion based video today. I wanted to do a kind of six months later look at the Stratton Synchro, uh, which I've had for a while, but then of course I fell ill uh, during the week. It wasn't that I couldn't even do a video, but I couldn't talk because my, <laughs> my nasal cavities were stuffed full. I love fall, I hate what it does to my nose. Uh, so I had to wait till later in the week to record this, hoping to do the Stratton video next week. And then I also have plenty of footage uh, from the Wind Up Watch Fair from New York last weekend. Had a great time out there. Um, looking forward to, to talking about that, discussing that a little bit, but it's a lot of, a lot of video and a lot of uh, pictures to chew through to show you guys uh, the kind of stuff I got to see there. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what's on the future. Like I said, I really want to do the synchro video this week, but just didn't have the time with, with the illness. Uh, so we're going to discuss, and uh, before we get to the discussion, a quick uh, wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Hamilton Khaki Field, uh, AKA the Desert Eagle. Um, went with the field watch today because I'm wearing the N7 t-shirt, uh, belatedly celebrating N7 day. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you can Google it. And if you know, then you know. So the topic uh, that we're discussing this week, and, and I'm shooting from the hip on this one. I didn't, I didn't prepare like a script or I didn't prepare any thoughts beforehand because I just wanted to kind of kind of go stream of consciousness with this topic. And I'll ask you the guys the question now, and I'll say at the end of the video to put your, your thoughts about this in the comments below. But uh, the question that I'm gonna ask this week is what, how important is the movement that is in a watch to you and why? The reason that I'm thinking about this question is because while I was at Wind Up last weekend, talking to the different brands, talking to the different designers of the watches that were showing off their products, that were showing off the watches that they had either available for sale or that were coming down the pipe soon, one of the first questions out of my mouth to every single one of them is, what's, what movement is inside of it? Perfectly rational question, right? Like for a watch enthusiast, for someone who cares about these things, who knows about these things, perfectly rational question to ask someone what movement is in the watch. Then I got to thinking, why is it, why is it so important to me? Why, why do I care? Just, just outside of pure curiosity, why is what is in the watch important to me to know? Um, and so I'm, I'm thinking about a couple different reasons as to why that is. One of the first reasons is it kind of gives me a benchmark on the price I should be paying for the watch. Here's a great example. So Zelos makes um, their, one of their meteorite dial divers that my wife, it caught her eye. She's very interested in it. And apparently uh, the diver, the dive watch comes in two different movements. You can either get it with a Seiko NH35 or you can get it with a Swiss ETA movement. And obviously there's a price difference between the two. The Seiko movement, I think version runs about 500 bucks and the ETA movement version runs about $700. And she asked me, hey, which one should I get if I'm gonna end up buying this watch one day? And I instinctively, kind of knee-jerk reaction was like, get the other one. And I don't know if I should care, honestly. Like $200 is not an insignificant amount of money. Um, it's a fair amount of a discount on the watch between the two. And there's nothing wrong with the NH35 movement. The NH35 movement is a fantastic movement. Uh, it's a workhorse movement. It's in a ton of micro brand watches. It's one of the most popular, you know, sourced movements in the world today. So I, I thought about why I, why I knee jerked that, why I immediately thought of, you know, saying, oh yeah, just buy the Swiss version. And one of the reasons is to me, and I could be totally off base and you can call me out if you want to, I don't care. To me, if a watch has an NH35 in it, I don't know that I want to pay more than like 350 for that watch. For some reason in my mind, that's like the appropriate value for a watch that has an NH35. And the reason for that is because there are a ton of watches out in the marketplace from micro brands or other brands that have NH35 movements that sit in right around $300. Uh, immediately, one that comes to mind is the Dan Henry 1970, another watch that my wife is keen on as well. Now, obviously, there's a world of difference between the, the Dan Henry 1970 and the Zelos Meteorite because obviously the Zelos, a little bit better materials going along with it. It's a bigger watch. It's, it's a heavy duty dive watch that can resist, you know, huge depths. Whereas the Dan Henry 1970, not quite to the uh, depth rating as the Zelos watch is. 
But for some reason in my mind, I just feel like that the value is, isn't there. But for the Eta Movement version, for the one that costs $700, I'm like, yeah, sure. It's a you know Swiss movement, uh, <laughs> you know, you know all the accoutrement that come with that. That is that for some reason that's that's fine with me. And it's it's kind of silly when you actually take a step back and think about it. But that's kind of where the value proposition lives in my head as far as those two movements go. So that's one that's one thing that I look at as well. Um, the next thing, obviously, is going to be long-term maintenance costs, servicing costs. How much is it gonna cost if I have to send this watch in inevitably for service because it's going to end up in for service at some point. Um, and that's that's a big deal as well. It's, it's with micro brands, it's less of a big deal um, because they're typically using source movements that most watchmakers, I would imagine, have vast amounts of experiences working with. Um, so that's not as big of a deal. That's That becomes more of a thing when you get into luxury move, luxury watches that have like in-house movements that you know need to be serviced by authorized technicians and things of that nature, but that's certainly that's certainly a big a big aspect to it as well as you have to plan for long-term costs. But here's the other reason that I want to know as well, and I bet you that a lot of you guys do this too, and that is that uh, I think we're just more trusting of movements that we have more experience with than than not. Here's a great example. Um, Dan Henry just came out with a couple new watches recently. One of them is the Gran Turismo, which you've probably seen before, which I got to experience hands-on finally. It has in it the Seiko, I think it's the VK64 Mecha Course movement, a movement that I'm very familiar with. Um, and I love, by the way. Like I said, I, I talked about it when I reviewed the Synchro, and when I look back at it, um, I'm sure I'll talk about it again. The VK64 is my favorite uh, like chronograph movement out there. Yes, before I get the comments in there, I haven't exp I haven't owned any watches with an automatic chronograph movement, so so cut it off in the past before we get to there. But I just really like that movement. I think it's really cool. At the same at the wind up fair, he also released uh, his 1972 uh, alarm chronograph watch, which was a you know debuting at the show for the first time. And it's a cool watch. It's a neat little chronograph. It's got alarm on it. Uh, but it has, like, I believe it's a Miyota chronograph movement in it, if I'm not mistaken. And for some reason, when I heard that, in my head, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know about that. And you can also look back when I reviewed the 1939, which has a Miyota 8021, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and I just didn't like it as much as I liked the Mecha Quartz. And there's differences between the two. Obviously, the Mecha Quartz movement has a chronograph module that mimics a you know, a mechanical chronograph, which makes it different than just a battery powered one. But I don't, I feel like I shouldn't care that much. I really do feel like I shouldn't care that much. But again, for some reason, I just, I, I just, I just bristled at that. Same thing now, whenever I'm looking at anything with an NH35, I don't own a watch that has an NH35 movement. So I haven't really gotten to use one firsthand. So there's that, just that little extra bit of apprehension whenever I'm looking at one that has it. And I don't, I'm not going to pretend that this is rational. I'm not going to pretend that this is a normal way to feel. And I'm probably being ridiculous. And I fully acknowledge that, but I bet you guys do it too. I bet you there are people out there that just don't, uh, that just have movements that they don't like or, or brands of movements that they don't like. I bet you there are some crazy folks out there who will buy a Eta movement, but they will not buy a watch that has a Salita movement in it, even though they're functionally the same watch movement for all intents and purposes. And I think that's one of the other reasons that we ask as well, is because that there are certain movements out there that for whatever reason, uh, we, we just are a little bit more apprehensive about. Hell, I know there's folks out there that'll only buy watches with in-house movements. If you if you can ball like that, then then ball away. But it's but it's 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 just one of those funny things that even though in my head, like like the one part of my brain's like you idiot, it's Seiko. It's 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 a Seiko automatic movement. It's gonna be great. It's better than your 7S26 movement that's in your SKX. What are you doing, you moron? And but the other part's like, I don't know, man. I just don't know if it's if it's as good. So it's and again, not rational at all. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, the movement that's in a watch is is one of the most important things that I have to know before buying it. And I would be lying if I said that there that the movement that's in a watch hasn't dissuaded me or encouraged me uh, to buy 
a particular watch or not in the past. I, I know that it has for sure. So that's a brief discussion for you guys to chew on about the importance of watch movements this week. I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic below. I might be crazy for all I know. And if I'm crazy, you can tell me I'm crazy in the comments, but I would love to know uh, what you guys think about this topic. If you guys agree, what, why a movement is important to you, why it's not important, why you don't really care. Tell me anything. Like I said, let me know in the comments down below. So thank you guys for watching this week. Click the like button down below if you found this video entertaining or informative. Also, if you've not yet subscribed, if you might be new to the channel, welcome. Do me a favor, click that red subscribe button, ring the bell icon, that way you will never miss when I post a new episode. And of course, I am on Instagram as well, at Budding Watch Enthusiast. If you use that platform, I would love it if you'd follow me there as well. Again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week.